here's my dog sled finished product. Uh, I didn't quite have enough paracord. Uh, you need like 500 yards, and I didn't come up with it. So I just use a cargo net off the truck for the back. But one of these days, I'll get some uh, paracord and end up weaving it all in and out. And on the back, make it look a little nicer. I shorten the seat, or, or the, I don't know if you want to call it the cargo area. Uh, and Chuck Yeager's plans that he did for the high school, uh, they did a wood shop project, I think it was in Wisconsin, but I altered the plans anyway. I didn't want it all the way across, and I'm using it for one dog sled, so I wanted to eliminate some of the weight. So I shortened it up, and then I raised the height. And when I raised the height, that made it so that I couldn't come out here unless I put more, uh, a couple more stanchions up here. So I just shortened it up. I just made it a kick sled with a, a basic seat. And uh, anyway, the uh, runners are 98 inches by two by half inch, and it, I was able to steam them real easy. Um, what I did for a steamer for the bow, the runners, and the handle was I went to the hardware store and picked up this piece of Schedule 40 pipe and got a cap, adapted it to fit my hose that came with a kit I borrowed from a guy for a wallpaper steamer. And it's a Wagner Power Steamer 705. I don't know how much they run. You might be able to pick one up on Craigslist. I want to get one. This one's borrowed. But it's got a one-gallon tank reservoir. And just about that time, the time I had about that much left in the reservoir, it's got an electric burner in there. It gets the water boiling and steaming. It worked great. I mean, when it was about empty, it was time to uh, pull the wood and bend it. And there's my jig for the handle. Um... I centered up my 90, I think it was 98 inch piece, centered it up, made a center mark, put a center mark on my wood so when I pulled it out I knew right where center was, lined up the center and bent it right down and held it in place with a couple wood clamps and let it set for a day or so. Here's the bow jig and I had the bow jig up there, made my center mark, my center mark on my wood so as soon as I pulled my wood out I knew right where center was, I could line it up, bend it down. Just two half inch pieces of plywood nailed together, worked great, clamped it together, left it. Um, here's my rough cut lumber, it was red oak, you can use ash, I would have preferred to use ash, but no big deal, it still looks great. So, uh, um, basically the assembly of this um, has to be able to shift the sled back and forth, it's got to have some, some give for making your turns. And that's the whole idea of using these eye bolts and your mortise and tenon joints. There's a mortise and tenon joint right here. Mortise and tenon there, and there, and there. The only thing I wish I would have done is made a wider mortise joint. You know, the width of the bo this one coming across. I wish it was the same exact width. width. No big deal. But those are, the, the tenon joint goes all the way across and into the, the false runner. I did change on the plans, uh, I think it was 68 inches the false runners were supposed to be. Well, they stopped right here. If I would have continued up, I would have got into my bend of my runners. Um, on his plans, hold, hold on one second. On his plans, you, he said you could either bend your wood in a steamer or cut 40 inches right into your your inch runner four slices and then put in your eighth inch pieces of wood the shims and put it in a vise and glue it with the shims in where you cut um, if you lay four pieces together and you bend it with with the glue it'll set up in that bend but I wanted to do it the traditional way and I wanted to do it with a steamer and uh, not make any cuts into the wood and have to cut the eighth inch pieces so I used four pieces of half inch and once I made the bends I, I didn't even really make a jig I measured up here to the top of this and it was 10 inches and uh, there was a certain amount of drop so I put this block here to know where my drop was and just left it there overnight and that gave me my 10 inches from the tip to the ground um, I should have probably went 12. That would have lift me, lifted up a little higher because once you pull it out of the jig, they do drop some. So I should have probably bent it at 12. And then when it when I pulled it out, it would have dropped to the 10 I needed. 
But, I mean, no big deal. I still got a good front end height. Uh, I also steam bent the sides. Basically, those are uh, half inch thick by an inch wide. And uh, I cut my angles at the top on the stanchions and uh, put them in there while they were still uh, hot and uh, binded them in there. Pardon me. So uh, I got the 12 Y bolts and I countersunk the bottoms underneath the runners. I countersunk them uh, enough to fit the nut. And then after I put all the eye bolts in, I came on the grinder and uh, just took the runner across the grinder and, and you know, uh, cleaned it up, cleaned them uh, eye bolts up. So I, I put the eye bolts in there before I even put the stanchions in. Made my runners, put the false runners on, and uh, glued them with some uh, Gorilla Glue, wood glue, outdoor wood glue. Let it set up and uh, brought in the grinder, buzzed them level and flush. That way when I put my uh, my metal runners underneath, which is just metal I got from a friend, and wax that metal up, and it covers up where the eye bolts are. So the eye bolts are countersunk in there, but you can't see it because the metal covers it right up. But uh, I shined up the metal on the sander and then uh, took some paraffin wax and Heated the, heated the metal up and rubbed the wax on as I heated the metal up. Now I just used a torpedo heater and uh, that propane heater and laid the, laid the pieces of metal across there after I sanded them, cleaned them up, just melted the paraffin wax on there, rubbed the paraffin wax in on both sides. Uh, but that's it. I mean, pretty simple. All that's bound together with paracord except for the eye bolts and a couple bolts in the back. Uh, got the eye bolt for, or the uh, bolt for the wedge there and there and your eye bolt in the center um, I do need to take a piece of tire I'm going to use this old motorcycle tire and cut out some rubber grips for the foot pads and just wrap the top of the uh, runners back there so I can stand there and my grandson can stand there and I have to worry about slipping and falling but that's it paracord red oak the steamer some time and some urethane. After I wrapped it all, I urethaned everything, paracord and all, and it works great. Works pretty good. So, thanks for watching. I appreciate you watching my videos and uh, check out some of my other ones. I've got some other videos, some knife making and some longbow making. Just quick how to's. Um, appreciate you watching. Thanks.